Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Maria Desmondi, publisher over at Cardinal Rule Press, and I am here doing the remainder of the fall series interview. Um, doesn't feel like fall here in Michigan, but we are doing the fall series where we are interviewing children's book authors and getting to hear about their journey into the world of publishing and how they really got started. So today I'm super excited because we have one of our very own authors, Michelle, here with us, McAvoy. So Michelle, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. You're welcome. And Michelle, tell everyone where you're um, tuning in from. Yeah, so I am in New Jersey, right outside of New York City, and it's very cold here as well. So we're ready for the winter, that's for sure. Bring it on, bring it on. Yeah. So here's the deal. Michelle is a very unique and special author because um, her story stood out to our team when she submitted a year ago, and her story, Cookie and Milk, will actually be coming out in um, the 2019 year. And but. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm like telling you the, the good news, but we want to hear the whole story. So Michelle, okay. tell us, let's like back up a few years, just a few. Oh, tell okay. Us, <laughs> tell <laughs> us what you were like as a child. Did you like reading and writing as a child? Um, you know, I, I think I did. I, you know what? I didn't love reading. I wasn't the most proficient reader. I was always a very good student. Um, but I'm, always I have always been a very slow reader so I enjoyed stories but I didn't in necessarily enjoy having to do it under constraints yeah. so I think I on my own time I did a, I read a lot of comics so I was a big Ooh. I was a, I was a huge Garfield fan so back when I was a kid we didn't have graphic novels like they have now so yeah. You know, I'm I'm getting up there in age, so we didn't have gra we didn't have graphic novels. We had comics. So I used to read a lot of comics. I used to read the comic strips. Um, I used to take the Garfield books and I used to draw Garfield. So I used to recreate the illustrations as well. Um, and so that's really what I love to do. And I, I think really what started my passion for books is when I was younger. Um, my grandmother lived in New York City in the West Village, and we used to go there every Sunday for macaroni. And every Sunday, well, every once in a while, my uncle would take us to the Barnes & Noble on 6th Avenue in New York. And we would just be able to walk around and pick one book, whatever book we wanted. And I really just fell in love with walking around and the smell of books and picking them up and just looking at all the different, um, all the different books that were out. And I remember... You know how like smells can like literally transport you back to a time and yeah. a place. I can like actually physically like find myself at that Barnes and Noble again as a little girl. And back in the day, they just let us walk around. Like now nowadays, I'd be hovering, watching for my kids. But we literally just, yeah, we just walked around the Barnes and Noble. I was like seven, eight years old. It wasn't a big deal. But um, I think that's really started like my love, my love for books. So, but here's the thing is you didn't actually go right into writing. So you had a couple no. passions. You went to NYU as mm -hmm. in, what was your undergraduate in? So I was a sociology major in undergrad. Um, and I always thought I was going to go into physical therapy, actually, but that, um, that didn't work out so well. So I was a sociology major and then I went to law school and I kind of went to law school on a whim. Like I'm kind of a little bit like a, I, I, I think a lot about things, but I sort of just sort of do things off the cuff too. And all my friends were going to law school. So I was like, what the heck? I'll go too, dad. You know, what? I, I like school and I love learning. Um, I'm, I'm huge on, I just love that environment. So I went to law school. But you're also a writer and a lawyer is a writer. I mean, when my attorney sends me something, I'm like, can you tell me what it says in English. Like, yes, you are a writer. And that's one of the things that I really picked up on, even in, in all the documents and the biographies that you sent me, you really are a writer. So you went to law school. And at what point were you thinking, I want to write a children's book? Yeah, so it's been a while. So I've been out of law school almost 20 years. So it has, I've, I've, I've sort of been through the process. And people forget, so lawyers, we have you know, we go to school to learn this different language, right? That we can write in the legalese. But lawyers, we write all the time. As a litigator, I wrote every single day. It was almost writing a term paper almost every day for the court. And you have to write persuasively. It's a creative writing skill that you have to do for law. 
um, that's very different than children's books, but I never got out of writing um, as an attorney. I started to write, I wanted to write, a, so um, when my father, pa my father passed away when I was 26, um, and it was a very difficult time for me, and I turned back to creative writing as an outlet for that you know, for that sadness or that grief. Um, and the stuff that I started to write when I was like 26, 27 creatively was kind of heavy. But then I had my children and it like just turned it around. I just saw life just with more color. And so I was writing creatively with more happiness and joy than I had been, you know, in my late 20s. And that's when I decided I want to write a children's book. I want to write a book my first children's book was my superhero grandpa, and it was a book specifically for my dad. It was a way for me to tell my children about their grandpa whom they had never met. So it's truly that he inspired, my dad was just such a supporter of me in every single way, and he truly just inspired me and put me on this path towards writing children's books. Mm, I love that. You're gonna make me cry. Oh, no, don't cry. And the cool thing was is that my superhero grandpa is a Moonbeam Award winner um, in the religion, in the religious category next to the Pope's book. So it was like huge. I was like, wow, this is like crazy company. But um, And I think a lot of people do start out writing as either like in a memoir for therapeutic reasons or like you said, like you were dealing with grief, but you were trying to bring it into what, what's a way I can honor my dad, but then I can bring this joy and this happiness to it. That's awesome. So that was, what year was that? So that was um, 2016 when I released my superhero grandpa. Okay. And then in 2018, you so, tell us the rest of the story because there's more people. Yep. So in 2016, I released my superhero grandpa and that was all me. I did it under my own imprint. Um, I hire a professional illustrator. I thought that was extremely important. And if you ever see the book, it really is a beautiful book. I did that in 2016. And then um, I got an agent. I got a fabulous agent, Stephanie Hansen at Metamorphosis. And she has really helped me get out there you know, professionally in, in the world of um, children's books. And she got me a deal with Native Ink Press for my second children's book, which is The Gorilla Picked Me. Which, um, here, correct? which The Gorilla Picked Me was released in March of 2018. Yep. So that's the, the latest and the greatest that I have out. Um, and I've been doing school visits and, and just different events centered around The Gorilla Picked Me. Awesome. And then you'll have Cookie and Milk. Please. Yes. And you're continuing to write and submit, correct? Yeah. So, I mean, <clears throat> I'm always writing, um, always writing. I almost, I don't know if Stephanie is like, stop sending me stuff because I'm always like, oh, I got this great new book and I like send it. And like, so I just love writing. Honestly, I've, I've just, you know, I did law for 20 years and, you know, I have my kids and I really try to find balance in my life now. And I, I still practice law. But I, I take time out to write and to be creative because I really feel like I'm just a better person when I'm well-rounded and I'm able to, you know, do my profession, my law profession and contribute to my household, but also, you know, spend time with my kids and have my own creative outlet. So I write all the time. Um, I'm on submission with other publishers um, for other things and, um, and Cookie and Milk, I'm just ecstatic about and we could talk I know you have questions I don't want to like <laughs> take over the whole interview but <laughs> cookie and milk is, is big. about cookie and milk and I will tell you I'm gonna pause real quick um someone's tuning in and they said that she also loves the smell of books and her husband thinks she's weird because she refuses to read a book on a device because she likes the feel and the smell of a physical book so that's yes it's huge and I know this is weird but this is gonna sound really bizarre but I think I like the smell more than I like reading them like I just go I go into Barnes and Noble and I like walk around and I could just it just relaxes me I don't know it just relaxes me I love it so writing yeah. is a form of self-care for you and now we're gonna hear a little bit about cookie and milk so go ahead tell okay us. awesome so cookie and milk um, is inspired so all of my stories are really inspired by a genuine place and familiarity for me and experiences for me all of them I think that's very important to just write from what you know as opposed to trying to recreate what you think other people want um, cookie and milk is very much it's actually ins inspired by two relationships um, so Cookie and Milk are two little girls that look nothing alike.
They act nothing alike, but they are best friends. Um, and the two relationships that inspired me to write this book is the relationship between myself and my best friend, who is African American. She's from Ethiopia, um, and you know we look absolutely nothing alike. And the funny thing is, when I first said something about cookie and milk on Facebook, my best friend, her sister. My best friend's name is Wasi. Her sister, Oz, the first thing she said is, did you write a book about you and Wasi? And I was like, oh, my God. You know, like she caught on right away, the inspiration. It was pretty funny. Um, so, yeah, Wasi and I are best friends. We look nothing alike. And it's just really important, I think, in today's climate to just see that, you know, our differences really sometimes is what brings us closer together. Um, and then the relationship between my brother and I, because we are – complete polar opposites. He was always like super daring and always doing things that were gonna get him hurt or or in trouble. And I was the very opposite. I used to like sit and just watch and, and, and laugh at him, but I was always the one that was doing puzzles and playing the labyrinth game and just doing more quiet things. So, um, but my brother and I are best friends too, we're only a year apart. So Cookie and Milk is inspired by two very two very special relationships in my life. Yeah, and um, Katie Taylor is saying this is a very relatable interview and she can't wait to check out your book. So yay! yay. That's check awesome. And I'm actually, Mandy, if you're tuning in, Mandy is part of our team. Um, we're going to need to rewind and just basically transcribe what Michelle said. Your pitch is straight. Your pitch is on. Oh. Okay. I, I swear I didn't rehearse it because if I rehearse, I get like all sweaty oh, and nervous. Great. So great. yeah. Okay, so something that's really unique that I have not been able to talk about with any of these interviews I've done. Something that I find very special about you, Michelle, is the way you know so many people in the industry. I wanna know more about that. I mean, you will just rattle off all these authors that you know that you're now interviewing on your podcast, which we need to hear about your podcast. But first I wanna know, how do you know all these people? You know, um, I don't know, no, so I think, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think in life, so I, I'm a true believer that we're put on this earth for each other. And I'm just, I don't want to sound like wonky or whatever, but I really, I'm, I'm like a people person. I feel like we're put on this earth for each other to help each other. Um, and when we can, and so, you know, so, so and, and I'm all about fostering relationships. I just like people. There's people out there that like, are, huh, I just like to be around people. So, um, you know, I've met a lot of people in the industry going to conferences. So I guess I went to my first SCBWI conference in 2017. January of 2017 was my first one. Um, and it was in New York. And I barely met anybody. And I thought, oh, my gosh. And I'm not a wallflower. I thought, oh, my gosh, how am I going to meet people? It's so difficult. But then I started going to sort of smaller conferences and just being genuine, you know, not you know, not like fan geeking out or anything, just being genuine to, I really wanted to learn from everybody. I wanted to learn from what they had already known or gone through. Um, and frankly, Twitter is a proverbial playground for children's book authors. Like if you are interested to get into the industry, um, children's book authors are amazing people. They love to talk about what they do. They love to help. And Twitter is just a place where we all like just goose around and talk to each other. So I think just a combination of being genuine on Twitter, like not like being on there to promote me, but being on there to like just be a part of the community um, and going to the conferences helped me to meet a lot of people. I think that's fantastic. And, you know, you're not the only person who's been um, an SCBWI member on these interviews, but you're the first person that I really I, I know knows a lot of people. And I think that that's important in the industry mm -hmm. when you want to make connections. And, you know, part of being a writer can be really lonely, which is great that you, you know, have law to practice on the side. And a lot of the authors we've interviewed have like these side gigs or these other things they do because it can get really lonely writing and promoting yourself. But what I love is that you've taken those connections and your ability to have that sense of community, for example, on Twitter and by attending conferences, and now you are taking it the next step and you're, you're connecting people in a more global aspect. So not just within your hometown, not just on Twitter. Tell us what you've been doing in the last month. Okay, so I started a, um, I started a podcast called My Messy Muse. And so... It really started off as a Facebook, uh, private Facebook group, 
Um, and then is now I have a podcast that goes along with it and we'll be doing workshops and really it's my messy muse is a community. So I operate best. I'm a gre gregarious person. I'm better when I'm with people. I have more energy, better energy than when I'm on my own. So that's just my tendency. So it's really my messy muse is a community um, of kid lit fans and to celebrate the messiness in life. So I kind of got sick of always seeing these perfect photos on on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, because it, it honestly makes people feel self-conscious um, to always see that everybody's life is so perfect. And I remember hearing, um, I, think it, it went, I think it was a biz chicks, um, um, which you turned me on to, a biz chicks podcast that said, you know, everybody's life is messy or something like that. And I was so interested to hear it because all of these professional women and all these successful women talking about how their life is messy too, because I am a mess literally every single day. I have a nine-year-old son, a six-year-old daughter, a husband who works all crazy hours. I'm doing the law. I'm trying to write. I'm all over the place. And I thought, wow, other people are as crazy as I am. Um, and I knew that my books, um, especially like my superhero grandpa and the gorilla picked me has a, a lot of a daddy undertone as well. So my books came from a sadness, something sad that happened to me. Um, and sad things happen to people all the time. And I thought, you know what? My messy muse is going to be about let's celebrate our messy. Let's celebrate our sad. Let's try to help other people turn their sad and their messy into a creative, beautiful book because kids need that too, you know? Um, and so that's what it is. My Messy Muse is now live on iTunes, Apple Podcasts. Mm -hmm. So that's exciting. We have um, three interviews up there. I interviewed Joanna Rowland or Roland. I always say that wrong. I think it's my Jersey accent. Joanna Rowland, um, Ariel Bernstein, and we just interviewed, I just interviewed Rob Flock. He's got a fabulous middle grade um, that's out. And so his uh, interview is going to go live next week. Uh, yeah, Friday. So every month we have an author spotlight. So I'm interviewing these fabulous, uh, fabulous authors, and then we're going to have workshops um, for people in Kidlet, and it's free. You just have to join my Facebook group. It's My Messy Muse, and all of the content is free for all of the members. So you, so there's Ask an Agent in December as well. So Stephanie Hansen, my agent, is going to open up to queries only for My Messy Muse members. So it's just a fun place. It's really a community. And for those of you listening, whether you are an author or you are, aspire to be an author, the thing that Michelle's really doing is she's taking her work and she's niching it down to, you know, I have a mission and I have a vision in my writing platform. You could go on to write a middle grade novel. You could go on to write a memoir if you wanted, but you, from the core, from your heart, this is where your work is coming from and you're building community around that, which is really great for networking and it's just overall great for community and support too. So that's beautiful. Thanks for sharing that. No, of course. And I would just love, and it's also a good place. So I would love to get like the teachers and librarians on there. Cause I think it's like a collaborative network too. I think we can all learn from each other, no matter if we're authors, illustrators, or librarians, we just all, we're all can support each other in this community. You know, I did a Facebook Live earlier today for my, my private Facebook group, which is made up of parents and educators. And I was sharing some of my favorite books to give away to family. And one of them is called the, My Beautiful Oops. Mm -hmm. So I wonder, I don't know who the author of, I, maybe it's Dallas Clayton, but look up the author of that book. I feel like you need that author on your podcast because okay. it's, it's basically saying, hey, we can make all these mistakes in life, life and we can have all these like negative down things happen, but we can turn it into something beautiful. So absolutely. That author, definitely. Absolutely. Thanks. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me check our um, our questions and see if there's any quest other questions. Um, I do. So, you are submitting. You are con continuing to write. Before we sign off today, tell me one more thing. If you like, do you have any bucket list items as an author? I'd love to know if you have any bucket list items as an author. Like, I want to meet so and so. I want to write this. Uh, well, I think that there's. So I. I tend to just like shoot for the stars. I just, I really do. And I think you know that about me. I'm always like, well, you know, um, and I think what? You're my A plus student. You're yeah, awesome. I am. I'm sort of an overachiever, but I, I've, 
but I think that was instilled in me too as a kid. And I know I always go back to talking about my parents and my dad, but they always just said, you could do whatever you want to do if you put your mind to it. And it's, and it's worked for me throughout my whole life. I've never doubted my abilities or my capabilities. And when I did, you know, I had support to push me through. So my bucket list is going to sound probably crazy, but, um, so well, one is I would love, I think Cookie and Milk are two fantastic characters that a lot of kids can relate to. I would love to see them on the screen. Mm-hmm. So I think that it's, you know, um, you know, with Captain Underpants, we have Harold, the two boys, Harold and George, that are best friends. I think that Cookie and Milk are just two fantastic characters for little girls, and I would love to see them on the screen. So that's like a big bucket list, I think that, but... I shoot for the stars. So everybody, let's get it on TV. That's number one. <laughs> and number two is I do have a um, I do have an early middle grade on submission that has series that has series potential, and I just so much would love that to get picked up because that's all. So I write for my heart, and I, that's very much a project for my heart, and I would love to have my early middle grade um, series get picked up. So. I guess those are two things that are on my bucket list for now. And for those of you, and we've got some more people tuning in, you'll have to make sure you go and read the comments. Um, thank you, Barbara, for your comments. She said, parents who tell their children they can do anything, dream big. We are unlimited potential and possibilities. That's beautiful. Um, the thing before we sign off, so those of you just tuning in, you got to rewind, listen to Michelle's interview. Uh, Michelle's a children's book author. She has three books, more on the way, but she's also – practices law. And here's the deal. We've interviewed, I think you might be like our ninth or 10th interview this series. And so many of these authors started out in a career and that led them on their journey to Mm -hmm. being there. And so we had an architect who, you know, was in architecture for, I think she said over a decade before she wrote her first um, middle grade novel, which is now a series with Disney. And she's illustrating it as well. Um, Shelley Johannes, I, there's just so much possibility, and I, I agree. And I think sometimes children think, well, I'm going to go to school to be X. Right. No, I'm gonna go to school to be X. But you can also learn to be Y, and you can also be Z if you want, because yeah. it's unlimited. And I love that you are a picture of that. And so many of the authors I've interviewed are truly a picture of, you know, endless possibilities. Yeah, I, I love that. And I think, too, you know, you can do it. You don't have just because you're older doesn't mean you can't do it. I think sometimes we get to a point, especially us moms, where we are just God dong, like exhausted. We're exhausted and we're working and we feel like we're too old to like try something new. And I will tell you, I mean, I'm in my 40s. I know I just said that on live TV or Facebook or whatever, but I'm in my 40s and, you know, I don't know, just just do it. I know that like Nike has that, but just do it. Like, don't ever doubt yourself. You're never too old. You just write and get it out there. And I want to, I do want to say one other thing. Um, and maybe this is advice for other authors or other people that want to write. Don't be afraid about what other people say about you or going to think about your writing. Um, because not everybody, and I tell this to the kids when I do my school visits, not everybody's going to like your story. Not everybody's going to like your book. And there's some people that are going to be just downright mean about things. Like literally put the negativity out because there are plenty of people that are going to love what you do. And that's all that matters. You don't need everybody in the world to love you and to love your story. You just need to reach really just one other kid, right? Because that's what it's about. So I would say don't be afraid of what other people are going to think and just be genuine and, and, and do it. And just do it. We're going to do it. We're going to just do it. Put your excuses aside because all these men and women we've been interviewing have made it happen. Thank you so much, Michelle. And Thanks. I'll make sure that people can connect with you in the comments below. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. Bye. Bye.